In this video, I want to talk about the Ramsey reset test for functional misspecification. So the idea is that I have some data, some yi and some xi, and maybe I fit a linear model to that data, and perhaps my linear model looks something like that. And as you can sort of see as I've drawn it here, the linear model doesn't seem to be fitting the data that well. So this is a model which is yi is equal to alpha plus beta xi plus some error ei. So perhaps what you might think to do here might be to include a quadratic term of xi because then perhaps my fitted line might look something like that. Although not perfect, it's doing a better job of explaining the variation in y than my original model. So perhaps a better model would be to have y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 times xi plus beta 2 times xi squared plus some sort of error. So the idea here is that we could test for functional misspecification in our original model by just including the quadratic term of xi and then just doing a t-test on its coefficient to see whether it's statistically different from zero. So that's fine in the situation where you have one independent variable, but in the situation where you have many independent variables, we run into some problems. So the problems which you run into here is, let's say I have a model which is yi is equal to alpha plus beta one times x one i plus beta two times x two i, all the way through and I have p independent variables in my model, so I have beta p times x p i. And this is the model which we originally fit to our data. But let's say that what we wanted to test now is we wanted to test whether it was the case that actually we should be including non-linear terms of the individual sort of independent variables in our model. So then what you might think to do then would be to include all the various quadratic terms. So we might include gamma 1 times x1i squared plus gamma 2 times x2i squared all the way through to the quadratic term of the pth independent variable xpi squared. But when you're looking at quadratic stuff, perhaps we should also be really including the cross product term. So perhaps what we should be including is delta one times x one i times x two i plus all the various cross terms. So you can see that even though we're just testing for whether it's the case of whether the fact we should be including quadratic terms in our model, in fact, we have to include a lot of independent variables in our model. I can't even count how many independent variables that we have to include in our model in this circumstance here. So you, we can quickly see that our econometric model is becoming completely unwieldy. So we want to try and avoid this because we're eating up a lot of degrees of freedom when we actually do this sort of estimation. So what Ramsey did is he came up with a, a way of testing for functional misspecification um, and looking for these sort of quadratic terms, but without actually eating up too many degrees of freedom. So the way in which he thought about doing this test was to run this original regression. So that's just a linear one, so we're forgetting about all these terms down here. And then to get the fitted values from that regression. So to get the individual alpha hat, beta one hat, beta two hat, and beta p hat, where the hats here indicate the actual values which have been outputted from OLS regression. And then what he suggested we should do would be to run a regression which is yi is equal to alpha plus beta one times x one i plus all the way up to our pth independent variable. So we've got beta p times x p i plus gamma one times our fitted values of yi from the first regression. So that's our fitted values which we obtain by using the estimated coefficients from our first model. And we don't just include yi hat, we actually square it. And then perhaps we also include a, another term of yi hat, which is yi hat cubed. And perhaps we could even include higher order yi hat terms. But in general, the sort of quadratic and the cubic tend to be the most commonly used form of this test. Okay, so why are we doing this? Well, the idea is that this yi hat squared term here Essentially what we're doing here is we're taking this expression and we're squaring it. And you could sort of think about if we were to expand this square bracket, we would get out 
each of these quadratic terms, which we had included in our original regression, as well as these cross product terms. So this term on yi hat squared is essentially capturing all of those indiv individual quadratic effects, but it is only one extra term that we've had to add to our regression. And the idea is that if our model is well specified, then a t-test on this individual coefficient here should actually lead us not to reject the null hypothesis that gamma one is equal to zero. In other words, there's no need to be including these quadratic terms in our model. And similarly, this cubic term of yi hat, essentially what we're doing here is we're just cubing this bracket up here. And you can think about if we were to cube it, we'd get these individual cubic terms, and we'd also get these cubic cross product terms. So we're testing for higher order functional misspecification by including this cubic term here. And the idea with the Ramsey reset test is that we would do an F test on both of these coefficients. Because essentially we're not interested in necessarily what type of functional misspecification we have, but we're just interested to see whether we have functionally misspecified our model. So by doing an F test on joint significance of this gamma one and this gamma two here, we're testing for general forms of functional misspecification. Of course, you don't necessarily need to include this cubic term here. You could just test for quadratic functional misspecification. I'm just including this cubic term here uh, for sort of the extension to the general case. And you can sort of think about the fact that we could actually include higher order terms. So perhaps I could include yi hat to the power four, but in my view, that's perhaps a little bit overzealous and we're in danger of overfitting the data in that circumstance. But you can see how the Ramsey reset test circumvents the problem which we had for adding each of the individual quadratic terms, which we would have had to do in our original way of thinking about functional misspecification. Essentially, we only have to add one extra term for each order of extra functional misspecification we're testing for. So that's the benefit of the Ramsey reset test.